Aaron has become the first hurricane of the Atlantic season with several areas already on alert for heavy rain, strong waves and rip currents, which are all possible along the east coast of the United States as early as next week. As of Saturday morning, Hurricane Eric had strengthened into a category four storm and to help us navigate through the storm and the timing of it is meteorologist Laura Power. Laura, with this hurricane, it is far off the coast right now, but it could still bring some impacts to some places. Where is it headed and what's the timing on this? Yeah, absolutely, Victoria. Starting off with just the satellite shot archived from Thursday as Aaron was really ramping up into a hurricane. And taking a look first at the previous storms that we've seen in the Atlantic. As you mentioned, Aaron is the first hurricane, but we have seen four uh, tropical storms earlier in the season. Uh, but yeah, Victoria, this thing is a massive hurricane. Impacts to the uh, northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Anguilla, Barbuda, Antigua, uh, but they uh, will likely get the outer band impacts. This is going to remain in the ocean. Uh, no real landfall will be made with this storm, but everyone will uh, in the Bahamas and eventually in through the eastern U.S. seaboard will feel impact from the system. Yeah, and you can see the track just north of Puerto Rico. That could bring in some heavy rainfall for uh, that area of the United States, as well as other areas impacted, like the Northern Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. There are some uh, hurricane alerts, or I should say tropical storm warnings in place for many of these areas that could feel the effects of this. Laura, some of the biggest uh, impacts, though, could be some rip currents. This is not only dangerous for the people on the coast, but also anyone who is heading in the water, obviously not smart to do so. Any property along the coast, erosion, that's especially uh, one of the biggest threats uh, associated with some of this hurricane probability. Now, the winds, that's a big topic of conversation, Laura. They look like they're very strong. Absolutely. We're getting upwards of 210 kilometers an hour. Those, and that's sustained. That's consistent over 200 kilometers an hour is absolutely uh, phenomenal in terms of the scale of the size of the system. Uh, and now as we go forward throughout the next seven days, say, it's not going to remain a Category 4 hurricane as it passes uh, parallel to the U.S. seaboard. It's going to get steered uh, kind of northward, a near miss for Atlantic Canada most likely, uh, but those winds will eventually ease as we go through the next uh, five to seven days. But again, much changes happens when we're forecasting a hurricane with lots of different steering factors. And yeah, we'll continue to monitor the story as this makes its way up through the coast. Is there any way that this could potentially bring remnants or impacts to Atlantic Canada in terms of like rainfall in the near future? Yeah, absolutely, Victoria. The system, as, as I just showed you, will likely remain offshore, staying in the ocean. But as the system gets steered, as I just showed you, parallel to the U.S. seaboard, northward towards Atlantic Canada, a trough over northern Canada is going to kind of push it back south, remaining in the ocean. But yeah, we could definitely be feeling a lot of those impacts as we go in through the next seven days, likely seeing some heavy rainfall from the remnants across Atlantic Canada. Well, rainfall is always welcome, especially across Atlantic Canada, who Newfoundland's dealing with multiple ongoing wildfires currently. So any rain is good news. It looks like rain is on the way for parts of Atlantic Canada in the near future. But with this hurricane, uh, or remnants rather, of this potential hurricane making its way across the seaboard, uh, this could bring in long range rain for Atlantic Canada. Again, good news for the ongoing wildfire situation there.